a great movie completely draws you in makes you feel for the characters makes you feel for the characters sorrow and joys a great movie has the ability to captivate us in a manner that for a couple of hours we completely forget what is happening in the reality my guest today is someone who loves to watch movies and loves to read books he brings a, his unique perspective to what he you know watches and reads uh so over to zagam now uh, for a brief introduction about himself hi um, first of all thanks for having me and uh, yeah i am zagam and i love to read books and uh, watch uh, watch films and i like i like to review them as well so hopefully i get to talk about one of the recent films that i've watched uh, recently okay so zagam to start with uh, please tell us about how did your love affair with movies start oh um i mean if if i see probably uh, you know my dad got me into movies um back when i was a kid he we used to watch like terminator and all those movies that uh, you know used to come on the television spider man and uh, back then it was like hindi dubbed which just came on television and i just watched it but later on i started to explore more like hollywood films and even foreign films afterwards so when i was in kota for like 3 years i then i found my what to say like profound love for movies i used to watch like four or five movies in a day it was it was that intense and uh, yeah i i probably have watched more movies at that time uh, in my life and uh, recently i'm trying to explore more you know world cinema like different uh, movies from different countries uh, including iranian films and french films like that okay so uh, since you are also exploring uh, movies from different countries uh, what is it do you feel is you know different about those movies from say indian movies or hollywood movies um yeah so uh, th- like every country has their own essence of cinema and uh, i think bollywood has its own charm for sure i mean we are uh, you know we we don't focus as much on the storytelling but more on the you know the glamorous part of it probably that like talking in the general sense like general bollywood uh, like on dance numbers and stuff but then if you see a movie from iran perhaps they are hyper focused on the story and the characters and they are so intense and i think one of my favorite uh, genres or you know like countries that make films is probably iran like i would highly recommend you to watch some of the a uh, good iranian films then there's french cinema french uh, french people they just like a lot uh, you know they get to get a lot into uh, the artistic styles and very experimental films so those are different and then hollywood of course i mean hollywood have has all kind of films like action thriller comedy and horror and uh, i particularly love horror a lot so i watched a couple of horror movies <laughs> Okay so uh, have there been uh, Iranian or French movies which have you know got more of a uh, you know acknowledgement from world cinema uh, which have been uh, nominated i know some of these movies have been nominated uh, for academy awards as well so tell us some of those films you know which have got uh, you know wider acknowledgement uh, from world cinema sure sure so i actually got to know about uh, this film called a separation which actually won the uh, best foreign film uh, at the 2012 oscars or something and that's what got me into uh, into iranian cinema i watched that movie and my mind was completely blown like i couldn't even i couldn't even think that it's an actual movie you know like uh, the way characters are portrayed and the events unfold it's so realistic and so uh, it 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 is it delves a lot into this thing in cinema called realism where you won't be able to differentiate if you're actually watching a movie or something and it's like the real life events are unfolding in front of you and they deal with very uh, common societal issues so for example like domestic violence or the uh, islamic revolution islamic revolution or the islamic regime that's there in uh, iran so that's just for iran though like if you see for other countries as i said like german films they uh, earlier they used to focus a lot on war and the uh, contribution of germany and, and the story that germany had to tell but these days um, they have all kinds of films and uh, coming to hollywood um yeah they, they, i mean there are all sorts of films and i think as for the recognition part 
I think recently they are getting more recognition. Even uh, the uh, Korean film Parasite, which won the actually won the best picture at the Oscars. So I guess gradually they are getting more recognition. Yes. Wonderful. So uh, you know, would it be right to say that? you know each country's cinema is representative of you know is representing that particular country's culture and what they are going through at you know any given point of time and as opposed to say hindi movies those are relatively less fictionalized and more realistic yeah absolutely i think cinema is a very um, powerful medium to show a country's culture and uh, the issues that are going right now with it and uh, as for indian cinema uh, i mean it's it's only been like uh, maybe a decade or a couple of years that now we have started to focus more on the societal issues and uh, earlier it was mostly bollywood which was mostly about around love stories or you know very genre based film but then uh, i guess recently we have made with couple of uh, very highly acclaimed documentaries as well which got nominated at cannes film festival and uh, and and oscars and like they're getting this worldwide recognition so i think yeah the change is happening definitely yes great so now let's talk about the movie that you know we decided we will discuss in this particular episode uh you know the furiosa if i am pronouncing it correctly yes, yes. okay i know that uh, it is a prequel of uh, mad, mad max movies uh, a prequel in the series of mad max movies so first give us a background of what mad max movies are all about right so mad max it's it's a dystopian world uh it is directed by this uh, you know renowned director his name is george miller and uh i think three or four movies again th- i i think three movies they came back in the 80s and yeah th- like the dystopian aspect was there but then it was very what to say 80s as well those uh, aesthetic was there uh back in the day but then in 2015 he released uh, like after a couple of decades he released mad max fury road which was so well received by critics and uh, even audiences worldwide and it and it was a huge success and uh, after that it's been 10 years since an, any mad max movie was released and now we are in 2024 and then this movie furiosa came and uh, i mean i knew that since it's by george miller it's going to be pro- probably probably good but i had i didn't know that it would be this good i mean it, this movie blew me away it was like really good but it's a sad thing that it didn't do very well at the box office uh, and it's kind of like a flop if you see in terms of money but i think if you go critically it's it's one of the best movies of 2024 for sure okay so to start with what made mad max the fury road appealing and you know what do you think made it such a huge success all right so i'll give you a fun fact mad max fury road doesn't even has a script Okay. Yeah. So what they did is they went directly with the story uh, storyboards. Uh, they just drew the scenes, different scenes, and then they just went and shot shot it on the camera. So that's the thing. It it doesn't emphasize as much on the storytelling, but it's uh it's about it's about the atmosphere in a way and the the uh, world they're trying to depict. It's a very brutal, very uh, unimaginable kind of dystopian world where where everything has gone. There's no uh green tree there's no what to say like all the all the things that human aspire for like the, the, the good things it's gone and it's like a very barren land it's like a desert land where only the only the fittest they have survived and and people uh people are struggling a lot in that dystopian world and uh there's this sense of dictatorship also that goes on some guy who uh you know helped those people and then uh, you know started ruling over them but that's like the bad guy and he is just like exploiting them yeah. okay so and what do you think you know could not work in that sense with furiosa why you know it could not connect with the audience at large uh, i was reading some comments uh, while i was trying to book my tickets for this particular movie though i couldn't uh people were saying that you know it's all 
action drama and there isn't much story to it and you know after a point a person who doesn't enjoy watching action movies you know might feel bored and stuff so what are your thoughts about uh, you know what did not get, go well with this particular uh, movie so i have two points here to uh, you know like say why if you resident didn't, didn't do that well um first of all definitely is in the marketing they didn't do a great job at marketing for this movie i mean even if you see the trailers it just doesn't give you that hype and even if you have watched the previous movies i mean you're like okay uh, it's an original story for furious sir but uh, what's so different from it so that's the thing you have to go and watch the movie for yourself there to realize that so yeah marketing definitely failed here they couldn't uh, promote the movie very well as well so not a lot of people didn't even know that it was coming or uh, it's already there in the theaters second fact i think after covid people have gotten very what to say um uh, comf- comfortable in their home space and they just want to stream movies instead of actually spending a lot of money and going to the IMAX and <laughs> seeing these big screen i mean if you are a cinema fan and you are like really into movies then you'll definitely go and even if it's like a thousand bucks or something but you'll if you want to watch a movie in the big screen you will go but for the general audience they just don't want to spend that much uh, and since they have they can see the same thing on a streaming platform after like a month or so so they just wait for it and then they watch it on uh, on some streaming platform instead of going to cinema so that's where it failed but critically if you see i mean uh, the the reviews are just uh, stellar for this movie okay so two points uh, number one do you think the fact that the sequel was coming after 10 years uh you know after the first movie released also might have played a part in you know not getting as much hype as the movie could have created otherwise and uh secondly how do you view this movie in terms of uh, you know execution of the story characters screenplay cinematography and other technical aspects right so definitely i think uh, that uh, you know like for the uh, audience Wait, I forgot the question. <laughs> We can... Okay, I'll just uh, repeat it once. Yeah. Okay, I was asking. Uh, first of all, uh, do you think the fact that this movie was coming ten years after the original movie was released also might have impacted the fact that it could not create as much hype? Yeah, yeah. So definitely, like the fact that that the time frame that it took to uh, release the prequel for Mad Max. Um, but I think uh, COVID also happened in between, and this was this movie was supposed to be released. way earlier than 2024 but uh, it's such a huge scale movie that the production must have got in into you know delayed and uh, but uh, if you see it from a you know uh, from a critical point of view i think uh, i think the director was just trying to tell a uh, good story and and that's what i think in furiosa i think the storytelling is more uh, fleshed out than mad max because mad max was just all about action and like uh, and like the cinematography here there's storytelling there's cinematography and there's some really good character development i think i think this is probably one of the best mo- revenge movies also i have ever seen and the kind of character development that furio furiosa has from the beginning to the end it's just mind blowing in in my opinion okay so uh- Do you think that prequels should be judged as standalone movies, or uh, should prequels be judged in terms of you know how uh, well they have added on to the movies that have released before? Like you know, I remember watching uh, a movie related to Dumbledore, uh, which was released I think a couple of years back. I could not really feel that excitement to go ahead and watch that movie, and because I was not sure whether I would be able to connect with the story and the characters as much, so I basically refrained from watching that movie. Also, mm. okay. So, do you feel that prequels at times are at a disadvantage because uh, people feel more connected to the characters in the original movie? And secondly, you know, should prequels be judged as standalone movies? That okay, you don't view it in terms of you know how is it how well is it preceding what has happened before yeah. you just view, view it as a movie like you would view any other movie right so to answer that question i think uh, there's aspects of both side of it so 
there's something called as fan service in in these kind of films especially uh what to say series of films if you see so let's take the example of lord of the rings when lord of the rings came it, i mean everybody knows that it's one of they are one of the greatest movies ever made uh but then the, when the prequels came the hobbit um they tried to they they did adapt the hobbit uh, like the books uh, the books but then they 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 did a lot of fan service thingy in that like uh, just uh, stuff that was not required and that's why they they didn't do it that well but let's take the example of furiosa now so it's a prequel and it has such a strong story at its core and uh, such strong characters that even if it if it, if it wasn't a mad max movie it would have been brilliant even then so yeah i mean to at at your point that sure prequels they need to have their own identity i mean some fan service is fine like yeah you can just mention this small detail or get a character from the and there are there are some characters in this movie as well like from the previous mad max uh, films but they don't just focus on that this movie is about furiosa and that's what it's about it's 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 just that yeah. okay so what do you have to say about george miller's direction oh george miller's direction is very unique um I mean it's very signature kind of like as soon as you see his action sequence you'll know that this is by George Miller it's like very raw and I I guess he hates CGI so he definitely doesn't use a lot of CGI very uh, very subtle and uh, so uh, I mean if you talk about Mad Max this movie some people think it's steampunk steampunk is kind of like a sub genre in these kind of films it's not steampunk it's diesel punk diesel punk is like the big machines big cars and big trucks and they have revving engines and that's the thrill of it you know if you watch this in IMAX the background noise you get of those engines roaring in the background there's this one guy who's playing electric guitar and then fire is coming out of his electric guitar is just so good to look at because this doesn't happen in the real world right and and it's his world is george miller's world and it's very signature signature style you'll you'll definitely get to know about it okay uh zegam which are some of the other action movies that you would recommend to the listeners of this podcast um so if is it like related to furiosa or any action movie in general any action movie in general oh sure so uh, first of all my favorite action movie probably would be the matrix the it's a 1999 classic uh, science fiction film matrix um what else um i i recently i found the john wick series very <laughs> entertaining and uh, i love the action there i mean it's so realistic and uh, so well choreographed i just love john wick and uh, i mean if you want like an ob- obscure recommendation um there's this indonesian film called the raid redemption the entire movie is about a uh, couple of guys fighting <laughs> but uh, it's i mean when you see the fight sequence right you won't be able to differentiate that it's not real it, it, that it's like choreographed it's that real and if, if there's there is a uh, storyline but uh, watch it for the action sequence so that's like my favorite movie of all uh, like my favorite action movie of all time okay so to tell you the truth uh, i have never been a huge fan of action movies and whenever i go to watch a superhero movie you know i always struggle with this fact that uh, you know after a point there are just way too many action sequences uh, for me to be able to actually enjoy that film okay so how can a viewer like me uh, learn to be a little bit more appreciative of action films or that you know genre so to say I mean you can't really force it I mean if you're not into action <laughs> then you just can't go go and you know watch 2 hours of people just fighting and beating each other up or you know a car car chase sequence but then if you if you learn a little bit about the the procedures or the methods behind filmmaking and then you'll ap- you'll appreciate at least the effort that uh, these uh, these people put into you know filming that kind of stuff and uh, i think hollywood they they, they always try to uh, you know uh, one up a notch in 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 these kind of things like uh, action specially so for example 
uh, who's the director of uh, Titanic game? I, I, I forgot. James Cameron. James Cameron. Yeah, James Cameron. Whenever he releases a new movie, I mean, he just re- breaks some kind of record, which is probably made by him only earlier, and he breaks his own record in terms of technology or even action, because that kind of stuff has never been done. And I mean that that should be fascinating enough because they are trying to do something new. Although the stories might be might be kind of like a retelling, but the way they have done and they 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 have used the team entire team to shoot just something that is very hard to 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 make. I think that's that's what I mean. You can appreciate that probably if you're not into into that kind of stuff. Okay, final words on why people should go and watch Fur- Furiosa. Um, Furiosa. I mean, go and watch for it for its brilliant storytelling. It's it's so good. Um, if you if you like origin stories and as I said, like character development, this movie is for you. And uh, even if you didn't like Mad Max Fury Road, I'd still recommend that people go and watch this. Um, it has it has very uh, three dimensional characters and uh, the cinematography is just just wild. And uh, I think this movie will probably back at least one or two Oscars or at least few nominations. That's for sure. Um, this movie was supposed to be seen on the biggest screen, but I'm not sure if it's running right now. Even if it's not, <laughs> just if it's come on streaming, do check it out. And uh, that's all. Thanks, Agam. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks for having me. Yeah, I had a lovely chat. <laughs>